In this year's MLB draft, the Miami Marlins selected the top overall high school pitching prospect in this class. At pick number 10, they took Noble Meyer out of Jesuit High School in Portland, Oregon. Noble is currently around 6'6 and still growing, has a fastball that sits in the mid-90s and hits 100, to go along with a slider, a changeup, and a curveball. And that's a young DeGrom pitching motion if I've seen one. Then, with their second pick, number 35 overall, they were somehow able to also select the top left-handed high school pitching prospect in Thomas White out of Massachusetts. Thomas is currently around 6'5", 210. His fastball sits in the mid-90s as well, to go along with his version of a slider, changeup, and curveball. Both of these guys have low effort velocity, and especially at such a young age, this projects to a high ceiling for the both of them. And by adding these top two young arms to their system, the Miami Marlins, in my opinion, have solidified the fact that they're gonna have one of the filthiest rotations in all of baseball for the next decade. But before we get into those details, just a reminder to please like and subscribe if you're a fan of this type of content. Now, let's get into it. The Marlins are deep at pitching. So deep that this prior offseason, they were able to trade Pablo Lopez straight up to the Twins to acquire the AL batting champion from the prior year, Luis Arias, who currently is leading the National League in batting average. And even after giving up Pablo Lopez, who logged 180 innings in 2022 for the Marlins, with a 3.75 ERA and a 1.167 whip, the Marlins starting rotation currently in 2023 is ranked 6th in Fangraphs wins above replacement, 4th in strikeouts per 9, 3rd in ground ball percentage, and 4th in FIP, which is fielding independent pitching. FIP is important because it focuses solely on the events a pitcher has the most control over, which are strikeouts, walks, hit by pitches, and home runs. It completely removes results on balls hit into the field of play. The ace of the Marlins rotation, of course, is Sandy Alcantara, who won the National League Cy Young in 2022 after pitching 228 and two-thirds innings with a 2.28 ERA and a 0.98 whip, along with an 8.1 strikeouts per nine and a two walks per nine. He's technically having a down year in 2023 with a 4.64 ERA, but he still has filthy stuff with a 98 mile an hour sinker as his primary pitch. His secondary pitch is a changeup coming in at around 91 miles an hour, followed by a four seam at 98, and then that slider at 89. And in case you forgot, Sandy Alcantara was acquired by the Marlins after trading Marcelo Ozuna to the Cardinals back in 2017. Sandy was signed to a contract extension during the 2021 offseason and is under contract through 2026 with a club option for 2027. So he will remain the frontline starter for the foreseeable future. Jesus Luzardo is the Marlins number two currently and his arsenal consists of a 97 mile an hour four seam fastball, a slider coming in at 85, a circle change at 88, and a sinker at 96.6. And he's especially tough to face because he already has a plus arsenal, but then you throw in the slide step, the quick pitch, and him messing with hitters timing, and he's gonna be a tough at bat for anyone. So far in 2023, the 25-year-old has pitched 109 and a third innings with a 3.29 ERA, a 1.134 whip, a 10.6 strikeouts per nine, and a 2.2 walks per nine. He's always had the plus strikeout stuff in his career, but since being acquired by the Marlins, he's really figured out how to limit the base runners. Jesus was acquired during the 2021 trade deadline in a trade that sent Starling Marte to the A's. Jesus is under club control through the 2026 season, and him and Sandy are going to be a mean one-two punch. Next up is the, you guessed it, filthy Edward Cabrera. His primary pitch is his changeup, which averages around 93 miles an hour, but his changeup has reached 96. He's breaking ankles with that pitch, and sometimes even his own. His secondary pitch is his four-seam fastball at 96, followed by the curveball at 84, slider at 88, and then a sinker at 96. Edward has had some injury risks throughout his first couple years, and he needs to learn how to manage the walks. So far this year, he's only pitched 67 innings, has a 4.7 ERA, a 1.403 whip, and the issue is the 5.5 walks per nine, but he still has an 11.3 Ks per nine, and he is currently on the injured list. He was signed by the Marlins back in 2015 and should be under club control until about 2028. 
and he's only 25 years old as well. Next up when healthy is Trevor Rogers. Trevor Rogers is another look from the left side. He has a four seam fastball around 95 miles an hour. His change up around 86, a slider around 81, and a sinker around 94. Trevor made the all-star game in 2021, but took a step back in 22 when he pitched 107 innings with a 5.47 ERA, a 1.505 whip, along with an 8.9 strikeouts per nine and a 3.8 walks per nine. Based on the headlines, it looks like he might be making a comeback relatively soon. And like he showed in 2021, his upside is pretty high. Trevor is currently 25 years old as well and is set to become an unrestricted free agent in 2027. Braxton Garrett rounds out the starting five for the Marlins, although he isn't quite as flashy as the rest of them. His primary pitch is a sinker at 90 miles an hour. His secondary is a slider around 83. After that is a cutter at 87, a curveball at 77, a changeup at 84, and then a four seam fastball around 90. In 2023, he's pitched 97 innings with a 3.9 ERA, a 1.155 whip, a 9.8 strikeouts per nine, and a 1.5 walks per nine. He's 25 years old as well and under contract until about 2028. Then we get to 20 year old Yuri Perez. Standing in at six foot eight, he made his MLB debut this year. And so far he's started 11 games, pitching in 53 and a third innings to the tune of a 2.36 ERA, a 1.088 whip, a 10.3 strikeouts per nine and a 2.9 walks per nine. His arsenal is a four seam fastball sitting around 98, a slider around 87, a curveball at 81, and a changeup around 90 miles an hour. Again, at just 20 years old, this guy is the present and the future, as his upside is an ace of a rotation, and with his motion, he reminds you of a young Sandy Alcantara. We'll see how the Marlins limit his innings the rest of the year, as he's currently in the minor leagues for that reason. But as soon as they let him go, just imagine a rotation of Sandy Alcantara, Jesus Luzardo, Yuri Perez, Edward Cabrera, plus whoever that number five is going to be for at least the next four years. So you have essentially six quality starters in the major league rotation, and then you get to the prospects. And their top overall prospect is, you guessed it, a starting pitcher in Max Meyer. Meyer underwent Tommy John surgery in March of 2023, so he'll likely be back at some point in 2024, but he has a forcing fastball that sits at 94 to 96, a high grade slider as well as a changeup. And at just 24 years old, he's got time to get healthy, to either contribute in the big leagues for the Marlins or work as a trade piece. Beyond Max, you have two left-handed pitchers at the AA level currently. You've got Jacob Miller at number seven, who's in single A, and then you've got former top prospect Sixto Sanchez at number 10. Sixto made his MLB debut at 21 years old back in 2020, and by Marlins standards was filthy. His primary pitch was a changeup around 89 miles an hour. Secondary was a sinker at 97, a four seam at 98.5, a cutter at 89, and a slider around 86. Sixto's last pitch thrown in professional baseball was on October 8th, 2020, and since then, he's been dealing with shoulder injuries, but from reports, it seems that he might be making a return relatively soon. So at the major league level, you have four starting rotation spots slotted out for the next four years. You then have additional depth in the minor leagues. Add to it Noblemeyer and Thomas White somewhere in the upper ranks of your farm system. And the Marlins are looking to be in a great spot. They currently hold a wild card position. And if they're going to be contenders this year, I expect them to make a move kind of like the one they did with Pablo Lopez. More likely trading one of their pitching prospects instead of someone from the rotation to get a bat this year or next to help them contend for the playoffs. But no matter which way you look at it, the Marlins are going to have one of the filthiest rotations for the next decade. Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more baseball content throughout the season. And we'll see you next time.